Welcome back, everybody. I got a special guest, return of a special guest. First, a disclaimer. Uh, nothing men are intended for illegal purposes. We're talking about uh, uh, the past, history, knowledge, fiction, experience. So welcome back once again. Going Hard twin, Kennels Twin, GHK Twin. Mo, how you doing, brother? What's up, big bro? Good, good. This topic today, we're going to cover conditioning. Everybody, they they love conditioning, man. And, and you guys were some of the best at it. So, let's get into it. Uh, first off, what, what were some of the, like, the major points when you're conditioning a dog that, that mattered the most? I know it all matters. You got to have a good dog and all that. And every little bit of it matters. But... What are some of the key things that you really focus on that, that that meant the most to you during your program? Getting the conditioning to work hand in hand with the maintaining and the feed. You can have a good condition and program, but if you ain't got the feed and the thing that you need to get a, go along with the conditioning. It's like you're taking two steps forward, and when you come to the feed, you're taking two steps backwards. Right. You know, yeah. that was my biggest thing, getting yeah. that part right. Right. Elaborate on that a little bit. Well, a lot of us, we get so concentrated on conditioning the dog itself, we don't have the part to fix what we're doing from the conditioning and our supplements or our feet or the way we rest. You know, those are those that feed and rest is major when you're conditioning and we're our conditioning because we had a real rugged, rough conditioning program. Well, I like it uh, I like killers and you know, dogs that could just get in there and just overwhelm me. But they gotta have, they gotta be able to overwhelm me with speed and and bite and and pace. Okay, I'm gonna just, if that's all I'm concentrating on is that, and I'm just feeding a couple of scoops of dog food and a little bit of vitamins, then I am not gonna see what I'm a, think I'm gonna see show day. A lot of new guys miss it even during the keep when it's those start showing signs that you know there's something missing. You know they 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 use that. Well, I'm just working them hard, so I'll back off a little bit. And the whole time they stand that throughout the whole keep. Five minutes in, they dog throwing into the show. They dog and ran hot and cannot recover. And they can't understand why. That's totally eight good weeks going down the drain. Through yeah. lack of experience. Right, right. I kind of have mentioned the same thing, you know, like I wanted my dogs to to move at a faster pace than their opponent. That way their conditioning ran out before mine and mine's still yeah. fresh. But that's like right. you said, that, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's all done in the keep, right? That that's where you get that hard workout. But the the food supplements or whatever it is you're using has to work in conjunction with that work, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 And that pace, you know, you guys have spoken about that a lot. And uh, just to be clear, so, some people, they, they kind of, maybe they misunderstand. Because that, that pace, it has to be at a high level. But there also has to be times where... where over a period of time, they slow down, pick it up, slow down, pick it up. But it's still mm -hmm. faster than their opponent. Very true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you know, your dog's going to hit a spot where he's breathing. You want that to happen after the spot your opponent started breathing heavy, right? Am I, am I catching yes, that sir. right? Right. You're really trying to force. It, it, it's like taking advantage of every that you can go in to your to your show with you want to have some type of up 
And pace is one of the bigger ones because a lot of guys don't understand, you know, what pace is. You know, even some of the old vets that, you know, they hear that word pace, and, oh, yeah, you know, I, no, 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 it is a key to that because when you are pushing your animal and you get there into your opponent and your opponent, he, he thinks the good, good hard work out here or there, but he finds himself in a match where my dog is running 90 miles an hour and you're going 120 because you weren't conditioned for but 85. Right. You know, you your ability might be good enough to to try to ward off the pace and the destruction that I'm pressing on you, and you're trying to stay with me. You're doing something that you didn't do eight weeks to keep. There it is. You know, eight week keep. There it is. That's it. It's almost like you you <coughs> you forcing the opponent to move or. Have a pace faster than what he's accustomed to or what he trained for. And that's True. that's what causes them to, to blow out first. And sometimes they, they can't recover from it. That's true. And, and it's, uh, it, it's so, you know, they be, it's not like we're looking for like everybody don't condition for, for pace. Most guys don't even think about that. Yeah. Yep. That's true. It don't even enter their head. You know, I was talking to Mr. Gray earlier, and uh, the, the topic always comes up, you know, how to peak your dog and peak in a dog, this and that. And back in the day, and even today, whether you're young or old, a lot of people, they never even thought about, like, what is a peak? What do you mean? Because they ask me all the time. What are you talking about? This and that. And that's kind of that same thing like you're saying about the pace. They don't even understand what it is. Nope. First thing they holler when they see it in the match is, oh, somebody, somebody messed up in the key. Well, I don't understand what's going on here. Yeah. Well, I got rubbed. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, I got rubbed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is true. It's, it's a, it's an advantage. But at the same time, you have to know exactly what you're doing. Like I was saying in the beginning. Pace can get you in trouble too. Yeah. You know, you, you don't know what you're doing. Your dog is not getting the right supplements. You're not getting the right rest. And you pushing your dog like that, you're doing more damage than you could if you had to never try it and did it like the other guys. Because yeah. it does a lot of damage when you get it wrong. That's true. You kill them. Yeah. You, you ruin them, you know. Yep. Yeah. Now, as you're, as you're going along, uh, through your keep, are there, are there, you know, naturally that, you know, when things are going great, you could tell, you know, when you see mm -hmm. something a little off or something, what, what are some of the adjustments you can make? Well, some of the things that I, I, I noticed and, and guys have to really pay attention to, and I don't know how you do it, but the way I did it, it was, it was a, I could go back into my notes and I'm because I'm writing everything down. Right. I'm not gonna be four days in and notice my dog is not progressing. That's that's one of the big mistakes right there. Not catching it when it first happened. There you go. You have to be able to know that you are getting progression. And if you have signs or you see that you are not getting progression. You have to be able to go back and see where it started or where you went wrong. Right. If you don't have a reference to go back to, you're, you're lost. Yeah. And you can eat most of the time if you don't have real experience to do a plan B, you're, 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 you're going to have a terrible key. Because when you push it for pace, you have to be on top of it. Because we're pushing a dog, and, and before I get too far into that, I'm going to say we push for pace on roids. You know, I have to put the roid part in it because the roid plays a different aspect to a person that's doing it naturally. Right. You know, I can talk about it being done naturally, 
I can talk about the enhancement by using noise. In both cases, pushing your dog at such an intense workout will show you the same effects. It's just with roids, you know, we have to have that. We must see the enhancement of the roid. Naturally, you, you it'll happen so much sooner because you have no enhancement. Gotcha. So it's like if I'm on roids and I'm pushing for uh, my dog to come out fast, maybe I want to see him just, I want to see him strong. I want to see him maneuverable. Ability is quick. They response, their aggression, everything is just at such a high level that when we go in, we just acting like the Tasmanian. Well, that comes to intense work. And when I say intense work, you know, you want to know the signs of what your dog look like when they get tired. You want to know the sign of what your dog look like when he start getting tired. There you go. You need to know the signs of your dog when he is peak at his, his level of exhaustion. And you have to know when your dog is able to, has recovered. You have to know these things and learn these things about that dog. All dogs are different. But you're, what you're asking for ain't, the, ain't no difference than what, any other, what you're asking for from all the other dogs. You just have to know that dog point. That's why you really cannot condition all dogs the same. But the concept and your expectation of your program is the same. Gotcha. You just have to work it on the dog right. differently because you're dealing with some different dog. Am I correct? Agreed. Now, now your your you know some of your background as it transfers over to the dogs could be like you guys have a military background, right? Yes, sir. And, and and uh, uh and me it's basically my work ethic how i was taught growing up you know my dad put us to work at a very young age right? right and and you can transfer a lot of that stuff over to how you work your dog or the concepts of conditioning to work your dog but regardless of where it comes from or what you think you have to go through the program you have to it's trial and error you have to you have to have hands on and, you know, I do videos of other people, and that's the one stipulation that I kind of burn, try and burn into people's mind. You might have all this theory, all this knowledge. You might know all the scientific words and the verbiage, all this stuff. But if you don't put it to use, all that don't mean nothing, right? That's true. That's true. It's easy to sit there and, and talk like you know what you're talking about. But can you do what you're talking about? You hear so many, everybody wants to be Earl Tudor or... <laughs> you yeah. know, it's NTLE and yeah, stuff, yeah. but it don't work like that. You sound yeah. good, but it's a different story when you have to do it. Exactly. I mean, you and just that, make that. one mistake and it can go all bad. You know, are you experienced enough to know what to do when you see the mistake? Are you experienced enough to, to see it before it gets serious? There you go. You know, those are things that, you know, it's, it's late when you realize it. <laughs> Because your dog is going to be so, he's going to be so lethargic, lethargic from the, the constant push you're putting on. It could be lack of rest. It could be lack of the supplement that's not there that he needs to get, you know, to stay up on that such a level. Right. You know, so many guys, they see that and they start taking two or three days off. Well, before you know it, you gonna have more days off than you have work. Yeah. Yes, and you're sir. not getting, you know, and, and most guys who really don't know, the first thing they do is they go and ask somebody, but they ask somebody not giving the full information based on what they didn't done. Right. You know, they just have questions, you know, they, they don't want to say it's them or they don't want to say what they did. Yeah. You know, they just, well, I think his past was hurting. Uh, you know, he just didn't seem like he was up to par today. So I gave him about two or three days. And then when he come back, he ain't the same still. Yeah. You know, and, and then they start making excuses throughout the rest of the keep. So what kind of dog did they bring in that night? There you go. Yeah, yeah, I get those questions all the time.
you know, mm -hmm. uh, my, uh, my dog doing this or whatever that, uh, what, what should I do about it? And I, I can't just answer, you know, because I don't know. I'm not right. there. And I tell him, well, tell me what you did. Tell me what you're feeding. Tell me what you're giving. Tell me how you're working. Tell me what, you know, how long did it take him to bust his... All these questions I have because because if if somebody asks you for information and you just go off and you say, well, you got to do this and you got to do that, you don't know shit about that guy's dog. How, yeah. how are you going to give him advice on something you don't know? Because it's not just general that way okay every dog you do like this you know so there has to be a lot more information given to the person you're asking for, for them to give you the right information back or advice you know especially if you're asking the right person right if he's gonna be asking you more questions and you try there to get you answers go to. exactly <laughs> he's gonna be asking you a lot of questions baby. yeah you know so when did you notice so do you keep your stuff down for reference? What, what, what are you doing during that time? What did you do those last three days? How was he looking? How long did it take him to recover? How long does it take your dog to recover in week two? Was he looking like that in week one? And you, you find yourself uh, answering, asking a lot of questions that they stutter through a lot of the answers because they one, they don't have a reference. Two, they haven't really figured out when it started. It just got bad. And hopefully it's early enough in the key for redemption because most of the time it's that last week uh, that they notice that there's a real big problem. Right. And then it's too late. And then it's too late. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of them do go in there messed up too late and don't get it. Yeah. Yeah, that's very good. So people listening, if you do have those, if you do have someone to go to and you do have questions like that, expect to be ask questions in return and like you said probably more than what they're asking you know especially if you're talking to the right person you know if you're talking to the right person because those are the type of questions that they're going to be asking you right because they're going to want to see where you messed up yeah. at what point did you mess up you know what I mean? and exactly what happened right when you messed up and so there. there's a lot of things that be, you know, when you got somebody that's knowing what they're talking about, you got to be prepared to listen. And then you'll find your answers based on what information you've given him because he'll go right back down through that start where he think you started at with the mistake. There you you go. looked at good this day, you looked at a little better this day, but you started noticing two days in that you might be working too hard. Well, no, you should go back and look what you did two days before. Mm -hmm. Because in every week, you must see progress. And progress covers everything. It covers, you know, are they still aware? Are they still active? Are they still got that eagerness to work? Are they still focused? You know, these are things that you expect to see. How long did it take him to recover? Well, last week he we took him about 10, 15 when we first started. This week is cake. We 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 doing a whole lot better. We we around seven and eight minutes where he'll slow down and, and take seven eight minute break before he start you know wanting more. But you have to be able to look at him and tell what it looks like when he starts recovering. You know, first I do this in the first part of my kid. I look for what it what my dog looks like when he get tired because that's probably the shortest amount of time in that first week is the shortest amount of time that your dog gonna get work because everything after that is being a addition there's always more being added more and more being added more conditioning you know you're gonna have more work on top of that conditioning so the best time to find out the behavior of your animal is the very first week when you can go out there and take your dog to that level of what it looks like when he gets tired. What does his tongue do? How's that slobber? How's that foam? Then you look at it again. You, I'm going to see how long it takes for it to piss it, 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 you know, slow down. All the way down to what it, what it looks like when he has recovered. It doesn't mean he has to be all the way back 100%. 
a good recovery to me is getting back up to at least 80, and if you're a great dog, at least 85. <laughs> and let that other 15%, generally, it works its way back in as the way they work. Right, right. And that's a that's another good reason to write all this stuff down. So you yes, can use that as important. a reference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the things I tell people, because they ask me, you know, well, how do you know he's in good shape? And I, I tell them, kind of like what you're saying, it's progressive. You're putting more work on him. But I tell them this, in, in the beginning of the keep, it's going to take a certain amount of time for your dog to get tired. Towards the end of the keep, you're putting more work on them, harder work. Is it take longer work, whether it's distance or time, but the dog recuperates faster. That's a it's sign true. right there that hey, this fucker, he's pretty, he's in pretty good shape, you know, because <laughs> you put more yeah. on him, but it takes him longer to get tired. They recuperate in a shorter amount of period of time. So those are signs if if it's the opposite where you're putting more work and now it's taking him long you know shorter to get tired and and he can't do this kind of, then man he did something wrong you're you're way off yeah. I, I tell you a little thing that i used to do the one that first week is like um yeah it takes him a little we, we, we don't work him as hard but the first week i always come in with this one frame thing the most important part of a match to me is the first 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. You can either take advantage of that first 30, or you can be at a disadvantage at that first 30. Gotcha. And the most important part for me is to, if I'm going to come in there at a pace, and I'm going to force this opponent to be, you know, where he's out there in my waters, I got to first make sure that I have the bulldog to do it. You know, and I always start off in my, from day one, I'm, I'm shooting for 30 minutes of, of, of blowout. I don't care whether it's on the electric meal, whether it's on the slap meal, or whether I'm outside flirting, whether I'm on a genie. I am trying to push this dog with whatever apparatus that he's loving to go after you know, to see how hard he'll work from day one. You, you know, not looking for him to look like he's going to be in an angry kick, but, but you're looking for his characteristics <laughs> of what he does when he starts getting tired. Yeah. Right. What can you, what do you do when you start noticing him getting tired? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. These are the things that you start learning about your dog and reading in your dog to step him separates him from the other dogs you may have done. Or if you're a new kind to learn it, this is something that you can pick up as very, you'll see why it's so important to write it down. You know, it's not the fact that you're getting used to see what your dog looks like when he gets tired or know where your dog is at when he starts getting tired because you've seen these things, you know, you just got to be aware of it when it goes wrong, when you don't see them. Right. Because my dogs, they, they, in the beginning, they get to foaming up. They get to making weird sounds. <laughs> you know, turned and went out from the left side of the mouth. You know, first you got that little curl up along with the slobber. You know, the foam. Yep. When that turn start to curling up in the mouth. Yep. And you start hearing that hacking. Hey, you, you, you're almost right there. You're almost at that maximum exhaust. But no, it's not, it's not right there when that mud comes out. It's when it comes out that mouth and get to do the land over where now he's doing your sucking air, trying to suck air. That's when you're at that point of exhaust because that's where you're going to start noticing his rapid breathing and his pace is not going to be the same. The more rapid they breathe and the less activity they're going to be giving you because they're too busy wasting it on catching their breath. Right. See, that's when I know I'm at, at exhaustion because they want to stop. We're doing whatever they're doing and just stand there for a minute and catch their breath. But if they got them little nut cases there, they, they want to, they, they'll, they, they'll do it just because it's in their head. As long as it's there, they're going to keep trying then it's your mistake if you can't help your dog. Right. 
if you can't see what, what your dog is at that point of exhaustion, but he didn't finally hit the wall. Hit, hitting the wall is when your dog cannot maintain his physicalness of, of work because he has gotten too tired to. You want to see that. You want to know what it looks like. I wouldn't care if it take you a half an hour to wait for him to come back off of recovery. It's just as important to see what it looks like as it looks as it is important for us to take 35, 40 minutes to see what your dog look like after recovering for such a push. That's why I always say push it for the first week because the first week is real hard on them if, if you're looking for this pace every day that you work. That first 30 minutes of push, I need to see it. I need to keep working on that. I keep fixinating everything that I do on that first 30. If I can get my dog to be able to have a pace, a real good pace, that he can maintain a continuous, a continuous of straight push, air, strength, agility, you'll see it like magic in the key. The right school boy. You right. I can give you a whole I'm thirty minutes it. of pure go. Yeah. And a good key. And you got ability. You're going if he's got any type of ability in mouth, most of the time he'll win early. Yep. Or he won't be working as hard as he would have in, in forty minutes because he's gonna have his opponent in a wall and he's gonna be on a wall and if your dog know how to finish, you're gonna finish. Right. Because they be so burned out trying to keep up. Did they get hot? They get weak, and a tired dog don't mind laying down. Yep. <laughs> he yeah. don't care how good he is. He will lay down. That's true. Because you're right. A lot of, uh, you know, back in the day, a lot of the shows they were decided within that first first thirty forty five minutes. Yes, and, sir. And for me, you know, I relate a lot of stuff to boxing. Right. So I don't I don't like fighters that come out, you know how they say they feel each other out and they move around and this and that. Mm -hmm. I want them to get down from the beginning. Let's go to work. And that's the way I work my dogs and that's the way I wanted to wanted them to be in a show. Don't no mm -hmm. playing around, no hesitating, no this or that, stepping here and there. Let's get to work. Get busy and and get it done. And that's even right. if it goes some distance what you did in that first 30, 45 minutes, it even tells later on because later on, when you're at that pace, yeah, your pace is going to slow down, but it's still a faster pace than your opponent. They're on the bottom, you're on the top. Now it just plays out whether it's the scratching or someone picks up or whatever like that. So it has that benefit yes, even later on in a show. Of, right. you know having that that pace and doing what you need to do early on it's kind of like you know if you're a fighter you get knocked down the first couple of rounds you know it takes that out of you takes that much out of you where yeah maybe you go the distance but you ain't gonna win <laughs> you know That's right. you can't That's come right. back from it the damage is already right. done so it has yeah, long-term benefits too it does but you're right brother I'm telling you, people are gonna eat this up. It's, it's, uh, uh you know, I, I, I love your perspective. Different, even though we share a lot of similar things. You know, you have your way of saying it, your way of doing it, <laughs> and, and uh, even your feed supplements, roids, all that stuff. The, the point is, is the end result. What's the end result of all this that we're talking about? And even, you know, whatever it is, conditioning or whatever, you have to have some results of what you did. That's right. And the way we did it back in the day, we, well, did you win? <laughs> did you win? Did you win? Kind of like that, you know. Yeah, and how you won. Yeah. And how you won. Right. I mean, I was, I keep, actually, one thing, I, I, I clearly would tell guys, you know, a lot of old timers kept that a secret, that pace thing. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Lamb, you hear him talk about it? I heard Mr. Williams talk about it, you know. Uh, them guys that had that melon head dog that beat 
the, the triple M back then. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They had picked up on that, man. They picked up on that, and that's how they went out to triple M with Melody. Mm. On Panther, remember that? That's what he said. He said that he knew that they had a rough dog, but if they could force the um, uh, it, it into a, their style of uh, what Melonhead could do, that they could probably put him into a trap in a bad situation. Right. You know, and they talked real highly of him. See, they talked real highly of Triple M back then, and, and a lot of guys didn't even know they were, you know, brothers. They just spoke highly of these 17 in a row matches that these guys had and the way they was doing it. But that's how they got them. That's how they got him. They had him pace himself into a, a, a real bad situation where, you know, they knew the dog was game. He already had that Jeep in him and he had good mouth, but they had a, Melanie had a little bit more sting to his abilities, you know, and that's what put Anthal in trouble. Right. You know, he got him, got him in trouble by putting that that pace on him, and he got winded, got winded like 20, 20 in, and Melanie had kept the pressure on him until he started falling off. And then by the time Melon had, had had cool, you know, had settled in on him, where he started settling down, Panther was too weak to take advantage. Yeah. Yeah. And that's there, why he looked so bad in the end. Everybody thought there was something wrong. No, he just, like he said, a lot of guys had no idea when we'd be talking about pace, they was winning matches. As a matter of fact, they was winning matches with this dog based on the pace because you know everybody didn't know about the pace even old timers didn't know about pace right and they actually there's an article out there i think we did it on our show when we were talking about melon head about the comment not only that they made about triple m but the comment that you know they were winning a lot of their matches because guys had no idea about pace they were looking their dogs look like they were some real aggressive uh you know beat your dog down type, and people just thought that they just had dogs with great abilities, and, and it wasn't really about the, just the great ability. It was the fact that they would be having them going so fast. Mm. Their dogs were getting, running hot, and dogs in good condition were running hot or slowing down, and a lot of guys didn't understand why when there wasn't everybody was never paying attention to the pace that they were going at. Right. They were just so busy sitting there watching dogs just grab them. But it's a little more than just the squabbling you need to be paying attention to. How fast is your dog working to keep up with this dog? Or how hard do your dog got to work to stay ahead? Because a good pace setter will come in there, and you could be better than him, and you'll run yourself tired trying to keep up with him, trying to keep him stay ahead of him. There you go. It doesn't take him where he has to be great. He could be just smart and force you into some trouble put you in a trap where you got to fight fast with him, even though you know you better than him, you know, you're gonna you're gonna feel that that pressure of, you know, why am I getting tired? Well you use up a lot of your energy trying to stay ahead. Right. It's almost like you you know, they they're a step behind, you know, and, and they push herself and they're they're pumping that adrenaline. But they're not effective. You know, it looks like they're doing something but they're not. Because the opponent's controlling them, and that that pace is faster. They're moving. They're outthinking them, or however you want to look at it. It's just they're they're like one step ahead of them. And now you you plan you actually plan catch up the whole way because you're not being effective with what you want to do. Your your opponent's negating all that. You know. That's right. That's true. And yeah. Boy, that's a terrible night to see that too. Woo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell me, you, you you know you know as well as I do. You look at you look at these some of these shows in the past, and there there always comes a point, and it don't have to be late or someone's all tore up or anything. But there's a point during the show where you go, man, th this dog gonna win, that one gonna lose. You know, if it keeps going like this, you know, it's gonna you know, and it doesn't have to be something blatant like, oh yeah, of course he broke this or he tore that up, whatever. It's not that. It's just you see it in the dog somewhere where. Man, that one, that one gonna win, you know. Yes, sir. The only time it really matters to the to the eye of the beholders of sitting out there watching it happen, is when they see it happen with two good dogs. Yeah. 
We got two good ones going into each other. Oh, this is going to be a good one. And then all of a sudden, you get there, and, 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 and they're supposed to be real good dog, but this one dog is making this real good dog look like, hey, he's <laughs> like I could have beat him tonight. Yeah. You know, paying close attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. You know, man. and that's when, you, because it only matters when you see the greatness because there's no excuses. Yeah. What you're expecting to see, you don't see. That's why a lot of those good, great matches don't go no more than 40, 30. Some of them quicker than that. Yeah, true. I guess some of the two best dogs going into each other. Yeah. It, it looks lopsided. Yeah. It wasn't because their dog it wasn't good as the other dog. Maybe he had a better plan. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the, the you know, does, uh, does the style, the build of the dog, the, the, the athleticism, all that, does that come into play in your keep? Are those factors that, you know, maybe this built dog you do this way and another one you do that way? Or is it just the dog itself, how they work, how they move, or whatever? That, that... Yeah, it really plays a big part on how they move. You know, I mean, when you're doing different lines of dogs, you just seem to know your yard. And if not got, you know what I'm saying? Like, we built the yard. Right. So we knew what we were taking. We we like back in. We like very rough. You got to be smart to get back there. Don't be stupid. But if you're good and you know how to get back there and you're going at a pace and you're forcing yourself upon him to get there, you know, that's what I condition for. You have to have that power. You have to have that push. You have to have that punch. And you have to have it at a pace. Right. So if you're delivering those type of punches, and, and like I said, it's different dogs, but if you have to kind of step down, you're using concept, and you're using it for this particular dog, so you're making adjustments for this particular dog to help for your, your uh, concept to work, you know what I'm saying? Then you will see early, you know, when you start working your dog that you're lacking power, you might be lacking power, or you might be on the ability thing, but don't have the power or the punch. Right. You know, but these are things you learn before you get there. Once you get starting to be on the dotted line, you're in there. So you better have it all figured out before you get there. Yeah, you don't. You don't want to figure <laughs> it out after the fact, man. You now you. Right. You know. You, yeah. you can get in, you can get into a situation like that where you know. When you got two good ones, and these are usually three times, four times, five times winners going into each other, and you, and you don't understand why you got so lopsided on you that night, it's because they just came in with a, a concept that was working and yours weren't. Right. You was forced into playing his game and him not playing your game, and it really shows early with two great though because there's no excuses. You can't go, oh, he was in a terrible cage. Well, like I seen Pan, like I said, I seen Pandy go, and I seen Queen of Heart go, and you would have to have exceptional dogs to beat those type of dogs because they're going 99 miles an hour, and and when they're going, they're going to spots that's going to have you in trouble. Even if you try to hang in there with them, you might last, look good, maybe 10, 15. But believe me, by that 20-minute mark, there's been so much work that you have put in with such a great dog that when you finally act like you're trying to catch up, you have nothing there to even take advantage of. It is breaking you down. It is breaking you down. You down. You're not, now it's looking like you're going backwards instead of forwards. And, and you can just tell, you know, even in them great matches, 20 minutes in, you know if that dog is going to be able to win. I saw Pepper get smashed by Queen of Heart. And Queen of Heart beat Pepper like Pepper wasn't nothing. And people had to understand, you should have seen Pepper when she wasn't on Queen. Right. I would have took Pepper in the Shady Lady. Yeah. She was a four-time winner I herself. I bet against Queen. That's right. I, I bet against Queen. Mm. Against Pepper. Yeah. I lost that night. Yeah. <laughs> I saw Pepper. I didn't know who Queen Heart was. Right. When they went and got her, I had no idea who she was. I didn't even know her, nothing about Queen beating that champion Lou that Ricky Jones had. 
All I knew is yeah, every hand was talking about, we're going to get that there. And when they came back, yeah, I do what we just saw Pepper do. Shoot, ain't nothing going to work Pepper. Queen came in there and took a hold of Pepper in the first 10 minutes. Pepper was in trouble. Mm. 20 minutes in, it was over. She came in there with such a burst of speed and, and power and just straight, this is the way I do things. You know what I'm saying? Don't yeah. care how good Pepper was. She just could <coughs> not get into that pace and destruction that Queen was putting on her. Yeah. It was like a real fast match, but you could just tell that Pepper's the one that's getting punched on. Yeah. And it caught up with her very quickly. Very quickly. Yeah. It's a, you know, whatever that type of dog does is like they're just real violent you know what i mean yes Whether very violent pushing or shaking or pumping or chewing it's just violent man like they 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 control the whole dog you know their whole body their whole how they move they just like they just they just nullify everything the other one's trying to do even though they're in there giving it their all they're, they're trying That's to right. keep up that pace trying to defense offense back swap it out whatever it is the other one just too violent for him, man. That's what that's what I noticed, you know. That's true, and I'm gonna tell you, Ricky Jones was very, very good at fast-paced dog. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at Shady Lady. Right. Ricky Jones, Kenny Allen was another one that knew when he had one. Now everybody can talk they junk about Tornado. You no, know, everybody thought they could whoop Tornado. That's why Tornado's a ten-time winner. Right. You had to believe you could whoop her. See, everybody keep on hollering, 10 time winner. Okay, you gotta remember something, but guys, to be a 10 time winner, that means you had 10 people who believed that they could win. Yeah, that's true. Regardless, yeah. Queen of Hearts won eight. That means there was eight people outside of everything they were doing. There was people out there that really thought they had, had a dog that could beat them. True. And yet, you look at their times. And they kind of dismantled all their opponents about the same type of way, same type of time. It yeah. didn't matter. Yeah, I saw a little, little, just a little clip, maybe a minute or two of Shady Lady. I don't know who she was going into, and I don't know who the opponent was, or, you know, I didn't recognize the people in there. But that's what I noticed when I seen that little clip. This bitch is violent, man. She could shake their whole body, take them off balance, take them off their feet. Same size bitch is her yep. it was one of her shows you know just mm -hmm. just violent man and that that's that's a special type of dog that can fight at that pace be so violent so overpowering overwhelming so dominant you know mm -hmm. uh it just they don't come around all the time but you can that was you can have attribute. yeah you can have a family of dogs that exhibit those traits of course some are going to be better than other this and that but they all similar you know like you said Yours, you know, they had that penchant for going to the stifle. And mine, to go to the throat. You know, I tried to keep that in there. That fast right. pace, power, strength, speed like that. And, and hit certain areas. So you can breed yes. your dogs to do that. Yes, you can. But like I said, it takes experience. Yeah. And if you got an experienced coach, somebody who's teaching that, it works so much better for you. But you got to see what it looks like for you. The most important thing is know what it looks like to see your dog get tired. Mm -hmm. And you build off of that. Right. You build off of that right yeah. there. Once you recognize what it looks like, it don't take but maybe two or three times of actually seeing it. That's why I do all my damage early. Right. I do my damage early, and I, and I stay on that until I get progress in the first 30. How long does it take for you to bring a dog to maximum conditioning for all? fast, hard 30 minutes. I'll say in a real good keep, in a real good keep, you can have your dog up to an hour, just pure madness. Pure madness. I know we have my keep tested because of the type of dogs we have, but I did run into one that took that, that same type of style and used it against us, and we ended up going three hours and 17 minutes. Right. With no scratches, no out of holes, no turns for three hours and 15 minutes. At two hours and 30 minutes, when both dogs finally took their first slowdown, I was ready to get my dog out of there. 
I knew from what I saw for the first hour and a half, oh, this is going to be a long one. Mm -hmm. But what I saw at 2.30, oh, we can really lose both of these dogs. Yeah. In a good, hard-paced match at 2.30, we had neither dog slow down. That was the first time that we actually saw that the dog was in the middle of the box and they weren't just scrapping it out. Now they're trying to get a host just to hold on. But I knew then. I said, if we don't get these dogs, we're going to lose them. And yeah. man, this has been a good two hours and 30 minutes, man. Let's grab these dogs. Let's call this thing a draw. Because these are two first time out dogs. These are dogs that I, I could tell you these dogs could win. And we just happened to run into each other. Right. Which happened. But as it turned out in the end, I ended up winning at 215. But I can tell you this I knew that we were going to lose both of those dogs. Working the damage that they put on themselves with that hard, continuous, just all out fighting at such a <laughs> blistering pace. The one didn't want to give the other one nothing. And it was just such a fast pace yeah. that I was surprised to be able to go that long because I had never seen that type of deep water. I didn't have those type of dogs that, could have, that had to go that long. But it just so happened the guy who I went into not only was it one of the dogs that I had got. It was a guy who had knew my keep. Right. <laughs> so there, there, yeah. there. That might be the reason why, or at least one of them. That was, yeah, that's exactly. Same the blood, same, it was same like family, like same keep, same. There he goes. Now we two, three hours or whatever it was. You know. Yes, sir. It was, yeah. and it yeah. was, it was like I said, it was one of the classicest matches that I was been in. And I have to definitely say, I saw Radar and Martel. McNasty said it was one of the greatest matches he ever saw. I was there that night, and I can tell you what two fast, laying hard, pushing dogs would do. And I <laughs> seen it that night, but I was, actually had the yeah. pleasure and the privilege to actually see how good my keep was that night that I went into a dog. And I looked at like the Radar and Martel match that night. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And to come out on top, it was glorifying. It was definitely glorifying for me. But it was just, the bad part was, in the end, I find out that, hey, not only was that a dog that I went up to Grand Stairs, Crenshaw, and got the mother. We bought the mother, and James said, well, look, she's also a grader. She's in heat right now. If you stay another day or two, I'll breed her the gator. I'll send you back with a little puppy. And guess what? We stayed and we had a little puppies off a of gator bear back to his daughter Lumpy. And one of those puppies is the puppy I went into that night. Oh, wow. Gotcha. Well, you're right about Radar and Martell because more than a few people wrote into the journal about how great a match it was. Even uh, Roblox wrote something, you know. Yeah, so if was yours was on that level, that must have been a badass show, man. Yeah, you, it's one of them kind of shows, man, where you see such a a, a match that you just want to glorify the American Pit Bull Terrier. That's what it really does. Right. Because you, you go back and look on your yard and you try to find something close and you can't. Yeah, yeah. That's so why we have so much respect for honest with one. yourself. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. have to be honest with yourself. Yeah. Can I go back to my house and look and see if I got anything like that? Right. And you start questioning yourself because you've seen something that we usually don't see. Two great dogs to put in that much work. Yes, sir, man. And that's, what that's why we admire them so much, Mo. You know what I mean? That's, that's, it's not, you know, a lot of times people, they think, we, you know, it's the blood and the guts. It's not that, you know, it's, it's, mm -hmm. you're looking at, at quality. You're looking at ability. You're looking at heart. You're looking at, at at things that may, you know, these animals are doing something that, that other animals can't do. And that's what you know makes us can. admire them so much. That's right. That's right. It's more that's that right. than, than the blood and gut shit. You see that all the time. That It, it becomes second nature after a point. Mm -hmm. you know? But I think that's a, that's a good point you made earlier on that, that you have to see the limits of your dog before... You start any keep. And lately I've been, you know, uh, putting the what we did in the past into the present time. So even if you're doing weight pull or treadmill race or wall climb or hunting hogs or whatever, if you're conditioning for that event, you have to see that 
even in today's time. You have to know your dog's limitations. You have to put the stress on them. You have to put them through rigorous whatever. Or else you, you don't know what their limits are. You don't know. And once you know that limit, you know, okay, I need to back off a little bit before it gets to that point where I'm not hurting the dog. That's right. And, and again, as you're conditioning, the time you're putting on them or the distance you're putting on them increases. That's right. So the limit is still the limit, but now you've upped it because of the conditioning that your dog is in. He's able to go longer or farther or whatever it is. That's right. So there's, and you're there's... supposed to see it. Right. If you don't have nothing to reference to it, honestly, how do you know? How do you know? Just like that. You can't know. You All it is is a guess. A guess. But Thank if, you. if you do it, then you have that experience. That's right. That you actually put hands on. And that's kind of the theme that's going around today. What does it matter what you know or what you say or what you heard if you haven't put it into hands-on use? It, it don't mean nothing. You have to. So true. So true. Yeah. And that's why a lot of young guys that was coming back in during our time taking those shots was finding out what fast lane was. Everybody was like, what is fast yeah. lane? Yeah. What is fast lane? You got a group of kennels out there back in our time that had learned these things. We talk about them all the time. We talk about roadblock. We talk about triple M. We talk about Stone City, hardcore. These were kennels that had learned these things, had their line of dogs, it was really beating people, not only based on the breedings they were making, they were beating people in the box with these dogs because they had it all figured out. A lot of them used roids. A lot of people holler, oh, yeah, 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 I beat the dog without roids. Nobody's ever denying the fact that dogs on roids can lose just like a dog that ain't on roids. Roids is not the answer to all things. But what it showed us is that their progression and their enhancement in those roids made it harder for them to be beat. There you go. Because they had the whole chemistry, the line, the breeding, the conditioning, the preparation. The dogs was coming in perfect. But that's why we can talk about these dogs today based on how these kennels brought these dogs out. Remember, we don't talk about dogs that just, you know, most of the dogs you ever hear talk about, I talk about on our show are champions or grand champions. Right. When I'm talking about a producing dog, you'll see if he is a champion or grand champion. Right. You hear me diving in on his, his production. Yeah. Is he worthy of being all will? A great champion is a, that can produce is a great ass dog. Yeah. A great champion that can produce is nothing but a great fighter. Yeah. Yep. And, and, uh, you know, the kennels that you talk about, and I do too, you know, they're at the, anybody can research them. If you care yes, to go sir. back into the journals or even the other magazines, GDD and, you know, Game Dog Time, all that. They're all in there. And you can see their record in real time of what was going on at the time. And, That's right. And in, into which competition. Those were considered the top kennels. And to your point, most of the people that I talk about, Old timers, whether it's Mr. Gray or Danny Burton or Ronnie Anderson, all these people that, that others are familiar with. Well, they use steroids too. But they yeah. knew how to use them. They knew the benefits. They knew the ins and outs, all that stuff. So it's not, it's, it's everything that we're talking about here. Feed, conditioning, knowing the, the how to condition the concepts steroid supplements whatever you're using they were doing all this stuff at a high level against competition their peers who were at that high level too and thinking back if you ain't seen it and you see things at that level it's almost like a slap in the face oh i get that oh that's different oh yeah that uh, that's something i ain't never seen before now i know what you're talking about when you say high level or you say uh, fast lane and all that. It's, it's almost like a, you woke up out of a dream or something. That, that's right. the memories I have when I see someone like Ronnie Anderson or T.L. How they condition their dog. Oh, that's conditioning. That's how it's supposed to look. I get it now. That's right. 
That's so true. And it does play a big part. <clears throat> and while we're on that part right there, I want to make sure that school board, before we get off of this, <clears throat> I want to talk to you guys about that protein, that old, you know, that guys that try to do this and with the feed. They just, they compound so much protein on their dog. Yeah. That they damn near be poisoning their dog, thinking they're giving them all the right stuff that they, you can over-protein your dog. And your dog will run hot on your ass. Yeah. Yeah, I think and we talked all about it the last that. time we talked. Yes. You're, you're right. Yes. Because the issue yes. came up with a friend of mine. Yes. Just on that point. I mean, Just I think that. I brought it to your attention. Right. And you went in there you know, and explained to me how, hey, that over protein in your dog will hurt you. Maybe you, you, it wasn't the last two weeks clean that it got messed up. It got messed up really five to full back. Yep. Because you're giving me too much protein. You got to know your protein. We're always checking for yeah. blood counts. Right. You better start checking that piss for that overwhelming protein. Right. And the stool, that protein too. will hit you. Hit a, you'll hit a wall, and you'll hit a wall that will knock your dog off their feet. Yeah. And you'll be standing there scratching your head, wondering, what did I do wrong? Protein poisoning is one of the most common things in a young dog man's career that they haven't figured out yet. Yeah. It's kind of that old, same old thing we talk about. They think more is better. And yes. It, it's not. In, in a lot of cases, it's not. Because Too much protein more, is not then good. They got to just pile on protein. Right. No. And, and sometimes you won't see it. You don't see it during the keep when you're putting the stress on them. You sure it's, don't. It's after they they. It's that peak week last week. Yes. Yeah. You, yeah. And, and then it all goes to shit. You know. And you go like, what? What? How come his piss is that way? How come the stool that way? Now he's lethargic. Mm -hmm. he, you yeah. know. He's uh, doing a crash on his weight. weight exactly. Huh. Yeah. Body just dumping. Yeah. It's because it's been overloaded. Yeah. And yeah. now you're fighting the last week when you're supposed to be resting. Yeah. You're dealing with down there a sick dog. Right. Yeah. They sick, you know. I had uh, even like, uh, you know, too much iron or this or that. I had a guy yes. tell me, is, you know, he would take his dog out to work. He's working the dog just for a confirmation show, you know. And this was in Mexico. And the guy's telling me, man, I, I've been taking my dog out, and I just go walk a little bit, and he starts breathing heavy, and he don't recoup, and this and that. And I said, well, give him a give him a day of rest, and call me the day after. No, he still did it, this and that. I said, finally, I said, give me your give me your feed. What are you feeding him? You know. Well, he said, I'm feeding him beef. I'm feeding him beef liver, red cell, B fifth, B twelve, extra iron shots, and all. I said, man, you're killing your dog. That's why he's doing all that. And that's what we mean, too many supplements, you know, uh, uh, you're giving them what the recommended doses, dosage is, but you're giving them all the same stuff that, that's all yes. interacted. The liver has, you know, and liver, the liver has the iron in it. So why are you giving them extra iron if you've given them liver? That's right. They give them. Right. They and the same with the protein. Deals. The same with the protein. If you're giving them one type of protein... But now you're putting all these different kinds of protein, or you're just giving them too much. 24 mm -hmm. ounces, 30 ounces of meat and shit. It's way too much, dude. They don't need that. That's right. That's, that, that's the one thing that I see a lot of young guys are making that mistake. Even, even I can honestly tell you, I think I ran into a, a situation with a kid that, you know, I wasn't really paying attention to his seed on what he was telling me he was feeding. And he came back and he said he hit a wall and his dog just seemed like it was winning. And then like 25 minutes in, it just felt like it looked like his dog just hit a wall, just hit the floor and just like went in the shock. Yeah, yeah. I did the and same said, thing. And, and what happens was, is because dogs will go through that spot and then they recruit. Well, mm -hmm. in this case, they hit that spot. They never recuperate back. They can't catch their air. They can't get up. They're done. Yeah. And that that that's the telltale sign. You know that that happens. And when I asked him what he was feeding, he was feeding cow liver, beef liver, ground beef, salmon, 
muscle milk, all the protein that you can feed your dog. <laughs> yeah. He's giving it to the poor <laughs> thing. I'm talking about all this protein. And like he said, the last week his dog, because he's not, he, he's resting his dog, his dog stool wouldn't get solid anymore. Right. He said it wasn't solid. It was starting to come out dark and ice creamy. Uh, he was losing too much weight because the body started dumping. Because it's not being used. Right, right. And you got so much shit in them, the body's not using it, it's dumping it. And protein hits your kidneys. Yep. And and that's where you start, that's where the fault is. That's why it's always, you know, those little, little urinary tags things. They, they, it's a protein test on those, te- those little strips. Right. It tells you, you know, that if you got your dog has got too much protein in their urine. Well, we always checking blood. When you need to, you know, these new things. They got urinary tests where you can test your dog for for uh, uh, protein overload, mm-hmm. where you have too much protein in the dog's urine. As yep. soon as too much protein in their body, and that's working on the kidney. Yeah, that's that will it, make your dog run hot. Yep, that's where it comes out in the urine. Yeah, you're exactly right. right. Yeah. Well, that's good information. Because like you said, you know, the new thing is, is, or recent thing is is checking their blood. You can buy a unit. You can test your own dog's blood. Well, if you can test the the, the urine, you can test the stool. You can, If you could test the fat content or cholesterol, maybe there would be a way to do it. All that, I think, is important. The more the, the knowledge you have and, and stuff that's available... I think it's important, but nobody, nobody ever thought, at least in my day, hey, let's check the urine. No, not even, right. a, not even a thought, you know. Never was even a thought. You just had to look at it, basically, and you know how does it look. And that's kind of right. where I came to that point where you know, this piss is dark all the time. What, what am I doing wrong? And right. then you match that to the workout. Why is he now? He's blowing hot and he's not recuperating. So I had to adjust this, adjust that. Finally. Man, I'm just giving them too much protein. That's all it is. That's all it but, is. But you got to do the trial and error and, and, and you know, adjust this, adjust that. Well, I'll give them more rest. and it's None of that is working. So it's got to be in the food somewhere. That's exactly. That's the part that they have to understand. They got to be able to be problem solvers. And you have to know when before you let it get too bad where you can't fix it. There you go. There you go. Bam. <laughs> with that uh mo our time's up on the clock here but uh is there anything else you want to say before we go brother i really appreciate it i mean anytime that you invite me to the classroom to be in the class with you there mr professor and i can stand up there in front of the class instead of sitting in the desk like everybody else it's a privilege and I appreciate you asking me to come, as always, big bro. You're welcome, brother. We'll do it again. I got so much more. Just, you know, I got a lot going on just like you do. I hit your show up whenever I have time. It, even if I can't see it, I press the like button, man. I got to give you guys support. It's a great always. platform. And, man, thanks for doing this for me again, brother. You know, always, big bro. Always. Hey, I got one thing to say before I go. Yes, sir. Hey, you, you guys need to get inside those books that you got for sale. Not only the schoolboy books, but you got them old journals out there. I hope you got mine put away. Make yep, sure you don't sure run do. out. But sure do. You need to go in and really, guys, if, uh, I mean, they never had the opportunity to take advantage of the journal. So a lot of these guys have never really had or really knew how important it was back in our time. They overlooked those things. But they was there, you know, you have these books where they can learn so much out of those books. To me, it's a wealth of information in those books. And I couldn't have said it better. They're not just good for entertainment. They're good to show you the American football at his finals at all levels from so many different people yep. because the answers and to all questions in them books are there. That's the simple, winners brother. and the losers. And yeah. that's what it great count at. Yeah. It's the winners that, and the losses. You, you hit it right there. It's that simple. A lot of the questions they have, they're in there. The dogs you talk about are the people that 
that are talked about or information, all these supplements and all that, it's all in there, man. And and <clears throat> the historical stuff is great, but the information that you could learn from, <clears throat> even if it's dogs' pedigrees or their record, who did they beat and who they, it's there. You just gotta yes. you just gotta invest and, and be interested. And a lot of that is valid today. Or just dogs in your pedigrees. You'd be surprised if you go back there and look, match it up to your pedigrees, you're gonna see the dogs in your pedigrees in those books. Yes. Yeah, that was a great point, brother. Thank you, big bro. Yeah. All right, brother. We'll uh we'll do this again. Much appreciated. Thanks to everybody for listening, and we appreciate your support. S2W, 